overview of how you guys think social media is being used in and around the book business. And by business, I mean everyone involved. I mean the writers, the publishers, the overall community, the commercial side, the marketing side, the whole supply chain, and whether or not we're in, um, we're still sort of feeling our way around or, or someone's actually doing it right. One of the things I'd like to see publishers doing a, a little bit more is letting the reader in a, in new and sort of unique ways. So at CBC, doing the uh, guest hosting for the online book club, when we started to um, throw ideas around, I mean, it, 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 in, in all honesty, it probably came out of a moment of panic because I was thinking, well, do I know what I'm doing? Well, I do know people. And, um, you know, this is, this is going to be useful. It's helpful to help people create content in a new and unique voice because no one reads a book the same way, no one talks about a book in the same way. Um, and it ends up surprising you in really beneficial ways when you start to let them in for no good reason whatsoever other than they like you and want you to be a part of it. An example at CBC would be that I was, you know, charged for the task of doing these blogs, which I was really looking forward to doing, and then something went completely on my computer and everything's out of sync. Well, but we'd already made contact with, uh, with a blogger, Jen Knopf, who has this great blog, blog Keep It Real Book Club, um, uh, which is like co-hosted by a number of readers. And CBC has this um, this challenge called Make a Pitch. So, you know, we're asking people in a variety of different ways, using a variety of different media to, you know, pitch a book that you think all the candidates should read. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Jen had already taken it upon herself that she was going to record these blogs for each of the Canada Read titles. Well, in that moment, because she already trusted us, we already knew who she was, we already had a relationship, when the eyesight on my computer bummed up, it was nothing to go to her as a friend and say, oh, but it can seem that you're already doing this anyhow. She's got this whole new platform. She's thoughtful, she's well-read, uh, she knows the books, and, and you're going to be hard-pressed to find someone who actually reads all of the books and knows how to talk about them thoughtfully. That, you can't, you really can't pay for that, and you certainly can't plan for it, but once that happened, she was already in place. So I would love to see publishers do that sort of thing. I would love to do, when I was at Nancy, we did, um, we started a feature called DJ, DJ and Nancy. What the heck did it have anything to do with books, but on Fridays, it's summer hours, and so we started just like, you know, throwing that music on Blip, at, Blip at them. But to focus stuff in in a friendly sort of way, because when you go to book clubs, what do you do? You eat cookies, you drink tea, you drink wine, you spend maybe 10 minutes actually talking about the book. This is not strange to the culture of readership that we just like to hang out with one another. So, um, you know, they're not vampires to borrow from True Blue. Um, you know, invite them in. And now that they're so locatable, I mean, they're coming to publishers all the time. They're looking for review copies, they're being treated as critics. So, you know, reach out in new ways and say, hey, you want to take over our Twitter feed for a Friday afternoon? Can you imagine? For every time that we bring a blogger onto the CBC, whether it's a podcast or a blog or an interview, that is multiplied 10 times over than anything that we could have accomplished solely on the CBC Twitter feed. Because it's a healthy, egotistical thing to want to tell people that you've done something and the nation's voice is listening to you. So publishers could do that sort of thing. They could allow someone to say, well, you really love such and such by such and such, why don't you write a guest post? Rather than always point out, actually ask them to create content. That gets into the whole whether or not we pay for it sort of thing, which is tricky. Um, but I do think it's a way to bring a really truly new and unique and authentic voice so that people will want to show up more often and look at what else you've got. Yeah, I mean, I just want to, whoa. <laughs> Talk about, I don't know, um, echo Julie's sentiments, and because what social media has done, it's completely destroyed the barriers of communication and the avenues of communication that originally happened. And so readers can talk to authors, and authors can talk to bookstores, and bookstores can talk to publishers in a way that never could happen before. And I'm finding there's a lot of amazing things happening online, but for some reason, they're not, I don't know if it's resistance or what it is, because I know there's some publishers doing really amazing things online who do have authentic voices, but they seem to be peripheral to the conversation instead of immediately engaged in very participatory and driving it. And I think there's a lot of things out there that could be happening that could improve that. 